of tonight's finale of Flash. We are here with one of my favorite people on the planet, friend of the show, friend of the Koi, Jessica Parker <laughs> Kennedy. How you doing? Hi, friend Koi. Welcome. Thank you. I'm so excited to talk Flash. You, you were here for like the season premiere, so we're, we're booking I was. the Flash. I feel so well, like, well, thank you for having me back. This is such a wonderful welcome. I feel so included. I it, love it that we can shape a... the season around like this conversation. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's such an honor to be, a, to, a, to be able to bookend it in that light. All right, last time you were here, it was like, <laughs> are you excited to be a big part of the season? Turns mm. out you were a big part of the season. Yeah, just a, just a little big part, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. How's that been going? The big takeaway. Boy, oh boy. Uh, it's been incredible. I've had an amazing, uh, amazing 10 months. I've, I've worked with um, some of my most favorite people and I've met lifelong friends and uh, it's been so much work, which has been awesome. Um, that's like an actor's number one favorite thing to say is that like, I'm so tired because I've been on set so much. It's the best. It's the <laughs> nicest thing to be able to say. Now, this season is very dense and every season of Flash is dense, but this has so much time travel, like continuity and especially around you. Yeah. When you first got brought onto the project, did you know the big character twist was coming? Was that part of the introduction to the Nora? Yeah, I knew most of what was going to be happening in the season. Not absolutely everything, but a lot of it. Um, I didn't realize Nora would be messing up quite so often, just causing a lot of chaos in the season, um, which was just a delightful surprise because she's just a silly kid that doesn't know what she's doing that wants to impress her dad all the time. <laughs> Relatable, I mean, relatable. Barry, yeah. Barry's very good at messing up timelines too. So it's he father is, and daughter. No. And that's the thing. Like I'm just <laughs> following in his footsteps, really. That's why he can never get mad at me exactly. He like does for a second and then he's like, it's okay. I did the same thing. <laughs> yeah. Now, selfishly, I, I had the amazing experience of joining up in Vancouver to see some of this get filmed. Yes, yes I want these stories. The, I, it's very unique to be like, I was there as blankety blank. And it was really cool to see the sheer amount of dialogue that goes into a Ugh. scene. Uh, I was so impressed. At, they usually have that two to three pages for a movie, three to four for TV. This was like a soap opera amount, but not soap opera acting. It's crazy. And I have to ask how you in particular, you can cry and stop crying and come play a card game in like 12 seconds. That's just because I was so stressed all the time. The tears <laughs> were just real, the dialogue. No, yeah, so well, the people that have the hardest freaking dialogue on the whole show is Danielle Panabaker and Carlos Valdez because they have the science he talk and the stuff that they have to memorize and the speed they have to memorize it within and then the speed that they have to speak it is ridiculous. Yeah. So they're my heroes. <laughs> um, but yeah, those big cortex scenes where we're all there is just, it's it's utter chaos and they're the longest scenes. I kind of like them because they're contained and I get to work with all the actors at the same time. So for me, that's really fun as opposed to like being in the forest in the middle of the night at four o'clock in the morning, which we also <laughs> do sometimes too. Um, I talked about forests and now I forgot your question. Uh, how do you turn Nora on and off so efficiently? Oh, yeah. Um, I don't know. I feel I f like we're working really long hours and we're really tired. So it's really easy to cry. <laughs> <laughs> and it's easy to act like a child and Nora's like very childlike. So I think that all of part and parcel that works really well. And yeah, you do your scene, you do your thing, and then you go play cards with your friends on the side. <laughs> and it was great. And we all learned a new card game. Yeah, a Force 10. Ta was... Yeah, Force 10. Phase 10. Phase 10. Phase 10. Phase 10. Thank you. you yeah, phase 10. I was like, I need to know. I yeah, know. Phase taught, 10. Taught to us by Carlos Valdez. So. And Carlos, I love that there was a, a scene being filmed, but but Carlos and Candace would like, the game was such a thing that yeah, like, we're going to be over here, you guys, right, right here. And no, we got to go do these lines yeah, yeah. but right right here yeah yeah it felt like the di the dialogue was though important yes important uh <laughs> yeah there was a lot of like running back to play the card game in between takes well and this sounds very much like sort of classic theater actors who are just sort of you, all of the great theater stories are people being like and then they walked through the wings and it was on and they walked back off and it was off. <laughs> well i think too because they've been doing it for five seasons it's like they can it's just easy for them now it's like they can do it in their sleep so not that like being on set doesn't have its challenging moments obviously it does but it's easy for them to be like, and now I'm in character, and now me, and now I'm in character, and now I'm playing card games, so it's quite impressive. And when you were here at the beginning of the season, we talked about the family aspect of the Flash cast, because I was really impressed at Comic-Con with how everyone was just like shorthand and like yeah. really a family and loving and yeah. caring, and on set, it's even more so. I've never been on a set that was literally like a family reunion. Now that you've done a full season with these folks, have, has anything changed, any perspectives, any like any crazy hijinks? I mean, obviously. Yeah, yeah, there are hijinks. Like, <laughs> there was the day that uh, Tom Cavanaugh, who's um, the most, let's just say, the most um, 
mature. He's the oldest <laughs> of all of us. And he brought a ball to set, he brought a ball, brought a little red ball to play with. And so while other people were working, he was in the back trying to throw the ball at Grant and Grant would have to like catch it while Carlos was doing his scene. Needless to say, Carlos didn't find it very funny, but, and, and, and Grant really didn't either, but Tom thought the whole thing was just hilarious. I wasn't going to bring up that story, but I was there for this Oh, moment, you were there for and that. And the halls are so echoey. So you just, you're like, blah, 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 science, thump, thump, thump. It was hilarious. Grant would be like, don't, Tom, no, no. And Tom would go, I'm going to do it. And then Tom would throw the ball and Grant would have to catch it because if he didn't catch it, it would bounce and then it would ruin the take. It was just, and I, and like Danielle Panabaker and I were in the back just going like, oh my God, boys are children. It doesn't matter how old they are, boys are, boys are children. But lots of very silly hijinks going on on the show for sure. So if you're a fan of the show and you wonder how that energy and that fun is captured, the show is that. Like behind the scenes, on yeah. camera, off camera. Bunch of silliness. What was the biggest surprise for you uh, getting a script since you guys, you knew the shape of the show, but was there any twist that happened this season that surprised you? Yes. <laughs> But I can't talk about it. Oh, oh. I was hoping. <laughs> Not about, is there any before tonight's episode? Um, uh, twist, big twist. Big, or big moment that uh, made you really happy. Uh, I don't know. I just like, I want to see something so exciting. And, um, but I just feel like everything has just been really special and I've loved every minute of it. Um, I, I, I don't know. I think I, 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 maybe not script wise, but r relying on Grant and Candace to actually be kind of my mom and dad on mm. set was a really big kind of thing I wasn't expecting at all. It was very much written that way in the script, of course. And yeah. then I found myself like days that I had to be a superhero and Grant wasn't on set, full blown panic, <laughs> full blown panic. Oh. I was like, be my dad, I don't know how to do this, where's Grant? Yeah. So he like, you know, metaphorically held my hand through a lot of it and so did Candace, so. That's fantastic. Yeah, they're my mom and dad. Mm. Uh, you uh, you were telling us a story about like one member of the cast that was sort of maybe potentially intimidating at first. Yeah, Kavanaugh. <laughs> yeah, when I when I met Kavanaugh, he um, I I was quite afraid of him just because he. Kavanaugh is one of the silliest people I've ever met in my entire life, but when you first meet him, sometimes he is a bit on guard. So uh, it, it took me, I was just like, well, this is the coolest person in the entire world, and like, he's famous. And I, it, was just, it was just very exciting. And then he was like, I have 11 children. And I was like, oh my God, and you're a dad, <laughs> and you're this. And um, it was one of, it's like when you are in school, and he's like the coolest person in school, and all you want to do is, is be friends with him, and you have to like work your way in. It didn't take very long to work my way in. Um, <laughs> But yeah, and then he just, you're like, oh, you're the silliest, goofiest person in the entire world. And then you just have a ridiculous time with him. And now he's like my big brother. <laughs> so if you could plan out a couple of things that there wasn't time for Nora to do this year, yeah. what would she have ducked out and done? Um, I wanted to have adventures so badly with Cisco's character <sighs> because he's one of my favorite characters on the show. So I feel like that I would have loved for like, Nora to go get in trouble and for Cisco to be there with it. And um, and Dibney too. I love that character and I wish I could have spent more time in the season, mm -hmm. like having, yeah, sp spending time with them and, and, and solving monster <laughs> mysteries. <laughs> yes. Excellent. So that's, that we will plan that for our fan fiction of Absolutely. the like lost adventures. A very yeah. similar question. If you had the powers of Nora, what would yeah. you do in your regular life differently? Well, I'm chronically 10 minutes late for everything. So I feel like if I had that speed, that including today, so I feel I'm like- i because it's so Barry Allen. Yeah, yeah well, it's so done. Barry Allen and so Jessica Parker Kennedy. Um, and uh, much to everyone's chagrin. Uh, yeah, so I probably wouldn't be late anymore. Or my time management skills would be exactly the same. And like, if I needed to be somewhere at 11, I would probably leave the house as, as nor like at 10, 59, 59. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But yeah, you get more done on the journey to the 10, Absolutely. Totally yeah, place. I'd run all my errands. Exactly. <laughs> grocery shopping for me would be the big change. I think I'd be amazing to like grocery shop in like 30 seconds. Oh, that'd And be then fun. like the calorie deficit would be amazing. Like yes. I, have, I have so many yes. like nutrition goals of flash powder. Totally. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> You'd be like more fit than you are now. Right. I'd just be like, and abs. Exactly. I despise grocery shopping so much. So that would be, that's a wonderful way to use it. In and out, done. List. <laughs> Done. Love it. Shop. That's the only part of grocery shopping I like is writing the list because you and me are both list yeah, writers and so we enjoy writing a list, but I don't like doing the things <laughs> on the list. And ironically, all. we run into each other at the grocery store and list making. Yes, very, very do. important. Yes. yes. Now, uh, I love that this season felt like a, another leap in not just the quality of the show, but the way that the propulsion of the show, like the way that the show's mm, going. Yeah. Uh, I see what you did there. Continue. Some sort of force with speed in it. Yeah. Uh, does, without giving anything away, yeah. is there anything in the finale that 
that lends itself to be like, there's something coming next season that would... Is there a giant tease at the end of the season without giving away what that tease is that's going to reshape the Flash? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the answer I was kind of expecting to get, but I had to ask the question because I love finales. <laughs> ah, yes. Mm. So I would say... <laughs> Officially, no particular reason to be excited about this one. No, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I got. Thanks, guys. Thanks for coming out. All right, see you next time. On to another subject. <laughs> so, to Black Sails. Yeah. Both are very family cast. Both are very different tone. What was the difference in, like, set flavor like? Hmm. It could not, in a lot of ways, be more different. I would say just so that because this the sort of scale of black sales was so intense and <laughs> the distances we had to travel to shoot location shoots and that sort of stuff. Um, and just the sheer uncomfortableness of all of us being in wigs and crazy costumes in the heat of South Africa where we shot it. Um, we were all super, super, super close. It's definitely like a friends for life. I actually just saw Clara Padgett who plays Aunt Bonnie the other day and I saw Zach the other day and I'm literally seeing Tom Hopper today uh, who played Billy Bones. Um, so good in Umbrella Academy. So, oh, I haven't seen it yet. Is it oh, awesome? So good. Yeah, oh, okay. he's incredible. I can't wait. Yeah. yeah, he's blowing up. Yeah, I'm he's really... He's like blowing up. I'm so fantastic. excited for him. Uh, he's a very talented man and very silly and does the most amazing impressions of anyone I've ever met ever. It's like extraordinary. <laughs> He's so gifted. He should have a Netflix like stand up just for his impressions. Really, it's truly entertaining. Um, yeah, uh, it's it just a different a different tone entirely because the two shows are such different tones and, you know, d dialogue on, on The Flash is one thing and then dialogue on Black Cells was like a whole other <laughs> like five pages of monologues every single day mm. of your life. They were the most thoughtful pirates of all time. That a lot <laughs> to say. They just thought and thought they they, they, they need, yeah, it was like the, the metaphors and very articulate pirates as well. <laughs> very well-read pirates. Con like soliloquies every day. It's funny. So with the, with the season in, in the can now, how did you find, like, was there a journey with the action of it? Did it come immediately to you? Or like, what was it like doing the action stuff on this? Which I imagine is unlike anything. Yeah, so I am a horrible speedster in real life. I'm a terrible <laughs> runner. Uh, the blooper reel just came out for us to see, the one with all the, the F words in it, which will be edited down uh, for the rest of the world. And the amount of times that I go the wrong direction fall mid run uh, <laughs> is like shock. No, it's not shocking to me, but it's like shocking for someone who has to play a speedster. Um, I got a lot, I, every, the fans have been so incredibly positive about my character, except for my running, which they've, <laughs> they've quite hated a lot of the time. I apologize profusely. Um, but uh, yeah, so I need to maybe just work on my, my, my running skills slightly. I feel like my fight scenes were really good that I had to do occasionally, um, but my running, you know, maybe need to work on that a little bit more time with my dad and, you know, get good like him. Cause he looks like, Grant looks so cool when he does all of his action stuff and his running stuff mixed with like facial expressions. He like is the flash where I was just like, whoa, trying my best and failing. Sometimes. Even at ballroom 20, like he's the flash. Like I really liked how he embraces the, the flash slide in three in oh, real life. Like gosh, it's just he really adorable. Does. Yeah. He, yeah. He's very much is in a way kind of like that character. Now you referenced fan reaction to your character. Mm. Uh, what has it been like to see that go out in the world to be part of this family? Like, so nice. So when I was at Comic-Con where I also ran into Koi at San Diego last year, I was doing a round table interview and this random interviewer asked me one question and he said, are you ready for the scrutiny? And I was like, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> and we had, we had barely started and I was, terrified after that because I always you know comic fans are very intense people we are a that's, passionate bunch yeah, yeah you, that's a fact but that's a wonderful <laughs> thing to be so passionate about something so when you're playing a character that's based on a comic character but then is like diff diff not that comic character it's like a mix of characters and mm -hmm. different people I was a little bit afraid um and then when he said that I became terrified and then for the most part other than occasional like eight-year-olds that have been like nobody likes you go home <laughs> go back where you came from like that the occasional like little messages I get which like actually make me like feel I don't know it like warms my heart even though they're negative because they're really funny um people have been really really positive towards me and really welcoming and said really nice things um so I felt very welcome amongst the actors and and that and and on set and then very welcome in the world of comic 
humans. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that. Yeah. How has how has that world changed? You were on Smallville back when this was just beginning. Like mm -hmm. comic books were not as widespread as no, like Smallville. No, it was like, oh, that's the the making a comic show, and it was a big deal. Now there's 30, and yeah. then you were a Secret Circle, so you've you've dabbled in that world like a couple times. How has it evolved since you've been? Yeah, in the game? I, it's I'm so glad that it has evolved. Um, mostly I f I feel that evolution going to Comic Cons, you know, because the fans are so intense and so enthusiastic. I've had people like meet me and cry, and I've <laughs> been like please don't cry um so that that that's just been i don't know i just love that because i understand it i mean everybody knows by now i'm a really big buffy fan so if, if mm -hmm. anyone feels anything about the characters that i've been able to play in these different shows the way that i feel about like my <laughs> buffy life you know I, it's a it's a huge deal so i feel very happy to be a part of it who on buffy would nora get along with and who would she hate uh i feel like she would get along with everybody, Tara was kind of annoying. I don't know. Maybe she would she would like be annoyed by Tara. But then I also think they'd be like best friends too. I don't know. Maybe like an initial cross wires and then the bonding. Yeah. Okay. Maybe like Spike, maybe like initially, because Nora would have been really little, you know, she would like wanna like like punch Spike all the time <laughs> or something, like in his like tummy or something and and I, I your your Buffy parallel to me, Buffy directly inspired Smallville down to the coffee shop, and then to me, Flash like Jitters is directly from the Buffy coffee. Like the flavor yeah. of Flash to me is very like Buffy. And I know, and the they even world. they even refer to themselves as the Scooby Gang, which they did on Buffy mm -hmm. all the time, you know, and they do it on the Flash constantly. So. so did you have that moment of fulfillment where you're like, I'm in this generation's like you've got you're in that world show? In a, in a way, in a way, to me, it's not quite you know that. Like I still envision myself like the way I look at Buffy, I was in that show i was like a character that i made <laughs> and i wasn't i was like angel's sister sort of somehow from something so i'm like well no 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 it's not that because i wasn't in buffy <laughs> even though it kind of was in my brain um but yeah there's an element of it 100 percent where i'm like i am kind of in that world like i i i am it's the same network basically yeah. like i you know i mean it was what was it called before? It was the wb, WB then the, and the cw w, yeah. but it is very cool like if i had that talking to that 13 year old version of myself to be like you're gonna be in a show like this referring to yourself as this goopy gang like <laughs> yeah it is definitely surreal and very exciting now the comic this week, uh, actually this past week, uh, issue 70 is the year one story. So it retells his origins and it's very much like the show. Like some of the frames are actually looking like the way the CW frames flash. Cool. Like Barry Allen feels like Grant. Is there anything you would love to see Nora get translated into the comics from your take? Is there anything you did that you'd like to see? Oh, that's such a good question. And a qu I like literally my heart sped up because I was like, please answer this well, please answer this well, please answer this well. Um, because I know comic, comic people are listening. Um, I don't know, I'd be so much more interested to hear what they would want me um i, I just i think I'd, I'd 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 like a a focus on what an incredible runner i am because i <laughs> missed that in the season so in the comics it would be like wow she is better than her father yeah <laughs> skill the range everything i think that's an important artists get on it yeah yeah oh, please, one thank page you. like the abilities of her yeah. to run yeah yeah, yeah. a like, caption box extraordinary <laughs> truly better than we've ever seen any speedster before yeah that's what i need I always ask actors, especially ones that I love their work and your stuff on Flash, like truly, even like as a friend and as a viewer of the Flash, what else do you want to do? Like, what's the next thing? Do you want to do like a Broadway play? Do you want to do like a drama? Do you want to do some Sorkin? I want to do all of it. I want to do Sorkin. I want to do Broadway. I want to do drama. I want to do comedy. I want to do absolutely everything. I've got so much, uh, I've got so much to give. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, there's something, acting is a really glorious, cathartic experience. And, and I think being able to dabble in all genres is an important thing to be able to do. Even if you fall flat on your face and are terrible, it's, you gotta try everything. It's like Johnny Depp just does absolutely everything. And most of the time we love him and sometimes we're like, oh, Johnny. <laughs> and, um, and it's just mad respect every single time, whether it's amazing or it's not. So I just wanna, I wanna do that. Do you have a favorite moment that we saw or one that we didn't get to see because it was behind the scenes from this year? Mm, oh, I, I, I hope that you get to see me falling. So in the 100th episode that Tom Cavanaugh <laughs> directed, mm -hmm. there's a scene where Grant and I would, because we sort of do this freeze thing before Run and I was in these platform sneakers and we were on a hill and every single time, and we're both like in black and looking like really cool <laughs> and Grant, and we'd go, we get and run and we'd get into this position and freeze and Grant would freeze and then run off and I would freeze and literally go. <laughs> it happened. 
10, 20 times. It was ridiculous. And it's in the blooper reel. So that's all I hope. I hope that that makes it onto the internet so everyone can see that. Because it's like, it's one of those things that like is genuine. Usually if it's you, you don't laugh. But I was like, wow, that's actually really funny. I'm an idiot. Yeah. So with the, once again, I'm not trying to get a tease for the end of the episode. Yeah. But with the finale airing tonight, is there anything you would say from this full season experience leading up to the finale, you'd want people to know that someone might not from just the footage. Any, any tease for tonight from your set experience that you want to... Like, I'm talking about, like, the first minute of the show, not the last minute. The fir- in the first minute of the show. Like a safe, a safe tease. A safe tease. Well, I'll be in it. <laughs> Flash will be in it. Uh, Candace Patton will be there. Valdez will be there. Uh, I'm going to say all of the characters from the show are in the finale. That's the safest tease. I like it. I support there you it. Go. They're and all there. <laughs> that one of the, part of the beauty of the show is that you literally can just say, the cast of Flash will be there. And we're like, I'm in. Yeah. yeah like, it's true. I know. How nice is that? Mm. They're all so good. They were all cast so perfectly for the show. They really were. To I, a person, they were. Thank, thank you. you so much for being here again on Heroes. Thank you for, for having me. I love this season. I love the show. And I think it's very important that even if you fall on your face like Nora in episode 100 and other episodes, <laughs> you keep doing creative stuff, make awesome art. Thank you so much for joining us. And I can't wait to see tonight's episode. Yay, and, until you. next week, guys, stay sweaty. Enjoy.